Are you the kind of photographer who would like to spend more time in nature taking photographs of birds, but hauling around those big lenses is just not your idea of fun anymore? Well, I've got good news for you today. I'm gonna to walk you through the joys of bird photography on the Lumix G9 Mark II, a professional camera system that uses a small sensor packed with big performance. We are going to take a close look at a list of features that make this camera such an enjoyable and rewarding setup for capturing birds of all all kinds and we're going to enjoy the company of some very lovely birds along the way. Before I get into the weeds about this camera, I want to have a quick word with you about the birds themselves. I love bird photography partly because it can be a challenge and partly because birds are such rewarding subjects. Most birds are very shy of humans and their cameras, however, so often we have to be very patient when trying to capture them in the wild. City parks can be great places for birds because they're more tolerant of humans being around them and they're less flighty. Certain times a year, many birds are more focused on their nesting and less focused on my camera, so that can be helpful too. In the city of Melbourne, we enjoy close encounters with this superb fairy wren every spring when the boys are putting on a show for the females or keeping competing males away from their nest. A little bit of knowledge about the behavior of your local birds can really help you be in the right place at the right time. The Lumix 100 to 400 millimeter telephoto zoom is my go-to lens for birds. And on any micro four thirds camera, this lens gives you the equivalent of a full frame 200 to 800 millimeters. That's an impressive amount of reach, especially for a camera that's so light and easy to carry. Most of the time, I'm all the way out at 400 millimeters with this lens. Birds are usually too small or too shy or both. Sometimes they're actually quite hard to land in the field of view at 400 millimeters. It's nice to have the option to zoom out a little and find the bird in the frame and then punch back to 400 millimeters again. And it gets better because this lens is image stabilized as well. Both the lens and the camera stabilization inside the G9 Mark II work together for maximum results. This means you can expect amazing results from the combination when shooting handheld. Unlike the full frame alternative, when I'm chasing birds with the G9, there's no need for me to pack a tripod. You can readily shoot at one 200th of a second and get sharp images. I've gone much lower than that too, but it really depends on how stable your handheld technique is, perhaps taking advantage of the continuous burst mode. Burst shooting is a critical part of bird photography. Even though the G9 Mark II can deliver a stable image, often the birds are gonna be on the move anyway. So it's nice to have a series of shots to draw from instead of just a few. Continuous burst means you can pick the perfect moment from your raw files. You can access the continuous burst mode via the drive mode dial on the G9 II. You have two presets to choose from, marked one and two, each of which can be assigned a burst speed in the menu. Low, medium and high speeds all use the mechanical shutter, but if you want something faster, then super high will deliver up to 75 frames per second using the electronic shutter. I have to admit that when I first heard about 75 frames per second, I thought maybe that was just a little bit over the top. Like, when exactly would I ever need 75 frames a second raw files? But when shooting test shots for this video, I encountered a special moment when a family of swallows were feeding their teenage kiddo. The little one waited patiently for mum or dad to pop by and drop off the occasional dragonfly and other snacks. I cranked up my burst mode to 75 frames per second and I'm so glad I did. Instead of just having a few moments in the sequence to choose from, what I had were very fine steps during the hovering and feeding. I could pick out the perfect moment where the wingspan was curled open and the kiddo was looking up. That was something very special for me. Sometimes though, you need more than speed. You need intuition. Pre-burst is a feature on the G9 Mark II where you can record moments 
that happen before you commit the shutter. When pre-burst is selected, the internal memory of the G9 is utilized to temporarily store frames. While you're half pressing the trigger, the camera uses the electronic shutter and starts collecting frames to its internal buffer. I keep holding the trigger half pressed until I see my subject move and then I hit the trigger fully. Depending on your reaction speed, it might be between half a second to a whole second before you commit the trigger. A one second length of pre-burst is often more than enough to capture that little moment of the recent past. When you're shooting continuous burst on the G9 Mark II, you may range from a few frames per second to 75 frames per second. That's a lot of raw files in a very short time. For this reason, I recommend very fast SD cards to quickly move images out of the camera buffer. It's worth noting that many SD cards will boast about their maximum speed, but they don't sustain that speed for very long. What matters more is how fast they can sustain data transfer. And for that, we look for the V rating. V60 cards, for example, will maintain a minimum of 60 megabytes per second, while V90 cards will keep pace with 90 megabytes per second. I personally don't use anything slower than V60. The harder you push the burst speeds, the faster you want those SD cards. It also makes downloading faster at the end of the day. The G9 Mark II has dual slots at high speed, both of which support the V90 cards. G9 Mark II has an advanced autofocus system, a hybrid of DFD and phase detect. It also has a lot of ways to control the autofocus setup. Getting to know these different modes and deciding for yourself which works best for you is very important. Everyone has their own ideas on what works best, which is why Lumix provides so many variations to choose from. My personal preference is to keep things simple. I like the One Area Plus setup as my default selection. This mode leans heavily on phase detect and delivers great results in a wide range of circumstances. Sometimes I want the autofocus to cast a wider net though, such as cranes taking off across a clear sky. For that, I might switch to the full area or zone, for example. When shooting birds on a branch, I like to be precise about where the autofocus lands and I'll even target the eyes because if the eyes are out of focus, the shot won't be quite so pleasing. That happens to me quite a lot where I'm landing on the body of the bird instead of the eyes. That's a very different challenge to shooting pelagic birds in flight off the back of a ship sailing through the Pacific. In those situations, you are often working hard just to actually hit the bird inside the frame with a 400 millimeter lens. For more dynamic moments such as these, it's better to engage the continuous autofocus. Let the camera shoulder some of the hard work. Most of the time I'm chasing birds that are very shy and often hiding deep inside a bush. The G9 II has a special feature to help with that too. Autofocus point scope lets you magnify the live scene and focus with the smallest possible autofocus area. It's the definition of precise and it can be fine tuned to suit your taste. There's one more autofocus feature that's worth exploring, the animal detect. When activated, your G9 II will scan for subjects in real time and highlight them through the viewfinder. A yellow box appears around the bird, indicating that the camera is ready to target that subject for focus. When you press the trigger or the rear autofocus button, the detected subject is locked on and the yellow box turns green to confirm. Animal detection works within the same and adjacent areas of the autofocus zone. Choose a wide autofocus mode like full zone if you want to maximize animal detection. There's one more sneaky feature on the Lumix cameras that I especially like called autofocus near shift. You know those times when the camera 
camera has focused on something in the distance, but your bird is out of focus in the foreground. Tapping the AF doesn't always work for you if the camera has already found a different subject to lock onto. When you assign AF near shift to one of the custom buttons, you can drive the autofocus to hunt towards you instead of away. Even if it's already locked onto something else, it's a great feature to quickly push the autofocus closer to your subject. What I haven't talked about so far are your options for shooting modes. Shutter speed is usually the critical factor when shooting birds. Most people want the lowest possible shutter speed so they get the lowest possible ISO, but they don't want their shutter too slow because then you get a blurry bird. We end up pushing the shutter higher only when we need it. What might surprise you is that I don't use shutter priority, but I use aperture priority. I typically want my lens wide open partly because I like bokeh and partly because that gives me a lower ISO. My next trick though is to use auto ISO and define a minimum shutter speed to match. All of this can be found in the menu. As an extra bonus, you can reassign any of your function buttons so you can gain quick access to changing the minimum shutter speed. For birds in a tree, one two hundredth of a second is often practical. For birds in flight, a much higher shutter is required, maybe one two thousandth. My choice of baseline here assumes that I'm shooting handheld and not working off a tripod. While the stabilization technology is amazing in the G9 Mark II, just remember that the movement of the subject is not something we can mitigate with technology other than a faster shutter. We've covered a lot of ground for stills photography on the G9 Mark II, but now we've got to touch on video as well. And this camera captures amazing quality footage. If video is one of your skills, you'll appreciate the luxury of native support for 5.7K 10-bit in V-Log Gamma. If you don't shoot a whole bunch of video, those numbers maybe won't be interesting to you. The thing to remember is that you don't pay extra for the professional features on this camera. They are standard. Some of the higher bitrate modes will require an external SSD to keep up, and support for SSD over USB is standard on the G9 Mark II as well. Options for recording quality are what will interest most owners. You can capture 4K footage up to 120 frames per second. Mostly, I shoot my birds at 25 frames a second because I produce video content to work with 25 frames per second timelines. If you live in a region where NTSC is more common, then you can set up your camera to operate in 30p instead. Just set your system frequency via the menu first. The SQ mode on the G9 lets me set 25 frames per second recording quality while capturing at 120 frames per second. High speed capture simply means slow motion playback. There's a lot of flexibility here. I capture all my video using Vlog Profile because that gives me the highest quality editing options later. This makes sense for professional work, but for everyday use, you may want to choose a more conventional profile or take advantage of the real-time LUT feature. LUT stands for Lookup Table, and it's a way to apply treatment to your video work. LUTs can give you some great creative styles, but keep in mind that any LUT treatment will be baked into the final footage. Your video setup also has some interesting options for stabilization. Lumix is recognized for their excellence in this area and the G9 Mark II is exceptional even by Lumix standards. E-stabilization uses sensor crop to deliver additional digital smoothing to the movement. You can go hard on this or shut it off entirely. E-stabe is great for dynamic situations and especially effective with a wide angle lens. For birds, there's another option that really delivers that I really like and it's called Boost IS. Think of this as the closest thing to having a tripod without having a tripod. Both e-stabilization and Boost IS will work up to 60 frames per second recording quality.
there's one final feature of the G9 that I recommend you get to know. The mode dial has three special modes for instant access to custom settings. Any of these configurations we've talked about so far can be saved into a custom setting. That applies to video or stills, you decide. When you wanna set up a custom setting, you don't go to C1 or C2 first. Instead, the first step is to configure the camera in the mode you want, then you go to the menu to save it into C1, C2, or C3. C3 is kind of special. It's like a library of settings you can save away for later recall. Up to 10 settings can be nested into the C3 library, and you choose which of those are linked to the C3 dial at any given time. You can even rename the custom settings to make it easier to remember what they're for. You can also save a copy of your entire camera setup to an SD card. That's useful if you have two G92 bodies and want to maintain the same custom settings across them both. It's also useful when you want to download a setup from the internet and apply to your camera, which is exactly what I've done for you. Just visit my website and the G92 for Birds blog post to download the exact settings that I've got on this G9. There's a link in description. ISO performance is one area people get worried about with smaller cameras. There are advantages to full frame cameras like the S5 Mark II, because it has dual ISO circuits, plus just larger pixels that gather more light. They are simply better pixels. You'll notice this mostly when the light is very bad. Underexposing a subject and then trying to lift the raw file later is a good recipe for maximizing noise, not detail. So with the smaller sensors in bad light, you want to expose properly for best results. Push the ISO instead of underexposing. In general, I think most people make way too much of a fuss about ISO. These sensors do an amazing job and deliver a lot of dynamic range across a wide range of sensitivity. In most situations, you have to go pixel peeping to see the difference between full frame and micro four thirds. You can print your G92 images at large scale and enjoy the detail. Years ago, I used the original G9 model for an exhibition on birds in Bhutan and printed my birds at 15 by 15 inches. They look gorgeous. I even had a few landscape images off that older G9 as well, captured with the pixel shift mode that builds high resolution raw files from a sequence of shots. We printed those at 33 by 33 inches square and they looked even better than the full frame 47 megapixel stills that were in the same exhibition. You can do a lot with your captures off micro four thirds. For double page spreads in National Geographic, I've never had an editor say no to images captured on a Lumix G-Series camera. I'm always torn between the merits of shooting wildlife with full frame cameras versus smaller sensors. I've enjoyed some fabulous journeys with my Sigma 60 to 600 millimeter, for example, and when combined with the Lumix S5 Mark II, the results are fantastic. Seriously great autofocus performance from that combination. But this is not an easy setup to travel with, and the weight alone is going to be a bridge too far for so many photographers. I am often asked whether the images on a full frame are better than my Micro Four Thirds setup. And if you can compare the same moment size Side by side, there is definitely a little bit more detail from the full frame and also a little more autofocus performance available when you have a really good lens like the Sigma. The real question is whether the slight edge in image quality is worth the extra effort. And that's a very personal decision to make and super difficult to assess because the reality is you will rarely be able to compare the alternatives side by side. Packing the G9 Mark II and a 100 to 400 millimeter lens is just so easy and comfortable. And I found that on my travels that I'm far more likely to have it with me when a moment happens. I should point out that if you're comparing the Lumix G9 Mark II against the Lumix S5 Mark II, then 
pretty much everything I've covered in this video is identical between the two cameras. They are very, very similar units to operate. Only on the S series, the models are full frame while the G series are micro four thirds. You do get slightly better stabilization on the smaller sensor of the G9 Mark II and high speed video features are a little more impressive. But really the main difference is the extra reach that micro four thirds offers while using much lighter lenses. It's not the size of the camera that matters so much as the size of a 400 millimeter lens that's delivering the equivalent of 800 millimeter telephoto. You'll notice that I described the G9 Mark II as a professional camera, and that's not without good reason. The first G9 body was a game changer for me because it allowed me to take photos that I simply never dreamed of with my old DSLR. And one of my first clients on the original G9 was National Geographic. I shot a story for them in the wilds of Tasmania using the full frame S1R for most of the project and the G9 for most of my wildlife. Side by side in the pages of a magazine, you cannot spot the difference. If the images off that little camera were good enough for Nat Geo, then I reckon they're good enough for me too. I hope this video has given you a sense of why I love this camera for bird photography. It ticks a lot of boxes on a professional level. And for me personally, it gives me a lot of joy. That combination of the 100 to 400 millimeter lens with the G9 Mark II body is just very special. It's easy to carry, easy to drive and delivers exceptional images. Shooting handheld instead of relying on a tripod makes the process of chasing wildlife so much more enjoyable. This is a camera that really rewards your effort. I think of the G9 Mark II as a camera that's easy to take for a walk in the park, but also capable of shooting from magazine in Antarctica. My enjoyment of wildlife has expanded to new horizons since adopting the original G9, and the Mark II simply takes the professional credentials up another notch. If the weight of your full frame system has become a deal breaker for you, then the Lumix G9 is definitely worth a closer look. This is an incredibly capable camera and can make time spent with nature just that little bit more rewarding. Hope you've enjoyed getting a little closer to some lovely birds today and I really hope you get a chance to enjoy some quality time with nature in your near future as well. Have a great day.